Sometimes, if somebody dares you to do something, don't. You never know where a dare can take you, or what can happen. Especially if you take a dare on a dark night, around midnight. As a matter of fact, I dare you to listen to the story I'm going to tell. Double dare you to listen to it at midnight. Well, maybe you can because it starts this way. Just a bunch of boys sitting around and talking and telling ghost stories, trying to scare each other. And they just happened to talk about an old man who had just died and been buried just that day. The old man never liked the boys, and the boys never liked him. And so they talked. One of the boys said the old man was so mean that if any of them sat on his grave, the old man would probably reach up and grab him. And one of the boys, his name was Jeb, said that was just a lot of nothing. Even if someone sat on the grave at midnight, nothing would happen. One of the boys dared him to do just that. And Jim said it was silly. And then they all dared him. And what else could he do? He said he didn't believe in ghosts or anything like that, so he took the dare. And to prove that he would do what they wanted him to do, he said he'd leave his jackknife sticking in the grave for proof. And that was that, until... until that night. At 11.30, a half hour away from midnight, Jim got out of bed, dressed, remembered to take his penknife, and carefully left his house. He didn't want to wake his parents because they wouldn't understand about going to a graveyard at midnight. And then when he was outside, he remembered he had forgotten his flashlight. Oh, but it didn't matter. It was a bright, moonlit night. Just the sort of night to visit a grave. If he didn't want to be frightened. Even so, even if it was pretty light outside, Jim was afraid. After all, he didn't really know too much about ghosts. He just didn't believe in them. But maybe that wasn't enough. Maybe there were ghosts. And he began to wish he hadn't taken the dare. But a dare was a dare. And he came to the graveyard. He opened the iron gate of the graveyard. The moon shone on the gravestones all around him. And they stood white, looking like ghosts. And he looked for the old man's grave. And just at midnight, he found it. He opened his jackknife, knelt down, and plunged it into the old man's grave. Huh. Nothing happened. It was after midnight. He had gone through with the dare, and he started to get up. But he couldn't. He couldn't move. Something was keeping him there on the grave. The old man, he didn't know. All he knew was that he couldn't move. The next day, Jim didn't show up at school. His friends wondered where he was. Probably out too late. They laughed about that. 
But after school, they walked over to the graveyard to see if Jim had left his knife where he said it would be. They found the knife. And they found Jim lying on top of the old man's grave. He had plunged the knife through his own coat and had pinned himself to the ground. He couldn't move. He had died of fright. Now that's not very scary, is it? Or is it? Why is it when the night comes, the whole world seems spooky, scary, horrible, and frightening? Is it because it's dark? Or is it because there's something out there, in the dark? Who knows? I don't. Do you know that sound? I don't. Is that someone coming, or something? I don't know. Is that a bird, or some lost ghost? I don't know. What are all those sounds, all those things, all those sounds that live in the dark? I don't know, but if you want to find out, come with me. It's a dark, dark night. And we're walking down a dark, dark road. And the dark, dark Trees make dark, dark shadows. And the shadows look as though they're living. Living? No, they look like... I don't know. But are they trees? Trees don't sound like that. Do they? And there, back from the dark, dark road, is an old, dark, dark house. And the house has a dark, dark door. And the house is dark. Dark. Hello? Hello? Is anything home? <laughs> the halls are dark. Dark. And all the rooms are dark, dark. And the stairs are dark, dark. And there, in the corner, a dark, dark corner, is a dark, dark chest. And when I open it, out jumps a dark, dark... <coughs> ghost!
There was a boy and his father, his mother, and a pet monkey. That's not much for a ghost story, is it? But wait. None of those sounds scared the little boy because all those sounds were made by him. He'd run errands for people, and he would be out late at night. Everybody always told him about ghosts, but he didn't believe a word. So he made those sounds because he thought it would be funny if somebody heard him and was scared. Some night, when he'd get home a little late, his father would say, I don't want you running around at night. I want you home on time. Aren't you afraid? And the little boy would say, Afraid? I never saw afraid. What's afraid? And his father said, Never mind, it's nothing to see. It's something to be. And I want you home early, hear me? And the little boy said he heard, but he kept on being late and making sounds as he walked down the dark roads and past the graveyards and the old deserted house. He never, ever saw afraid, but he heard. <laughs> and when he got home, his father and mother would tell him again and again they didn't want him out late. The little boy said he'd try, and then he'd sit down and talk to the pet monkey and ask him why his parents were so upset. There was nothing, absolutely nothing in the dark that could hurt him. And the monkey seemed to agree. One night, the little boy's mother and father decided something had to be done. They could talk and talk, but the little boy would always be coming home late until they did something about it. The father thought and thought and came up with an idea. You might say the father had to do what he was going to do because it was getting later and later and the little boy hadn't come home yet. He took a sheet and put it over his head and went out of the house and down the road to wait for the boy. And he waited and he waited. And the monkey kept running from the man to the house to the man, watching him all dressed up in the sheet. And while the father waited, the little boy was making his way home slowly and having a good time making all his scary sounds. The monkey was very interested in what was happening. And he thought, if the father could dress up in a sheet, so could he. And so he did. The boy came closer and closer, and his father heard the sounds and had to admit that they were pretty spooky. And if he didn't know who was making them, why, he'd be pretty scared. As a matter of fact, he was scared. But he felt he really had to teach his son a lesson about coming home late. The boy was just about to where his father was waiting. When the boy looked around, he could see something all dressed in white coming at him from the bushes. The boy said, That must be afraid. And he was pretty happy to see one at last. Just then, he saw another smaller white figure come out of the bushes. And he said, Why, that must be another afraid. And his father heard him. But the father knew there was just one of him dressed in a white sheet. And if his son saw two things in white, then one of them wasn't him. So it must be a ghost. And he was scared to death and ran and ran, with a monkey dressed in white running after him. And the little boy, not frightened at all, said, There goes a big fraid running away from a little fraid. 
and he joined them. <laughs> making his ghost sounds all the way home. There was a very big, very old, very falling apart house. It was the kind of house nobody ever went into. Because any house that looked like that just had to be haunted. And who would want to take a chance and find out for real? Nobody. Not on purpose. But sometimes things happen. And there's nothing you can do about it. The time this story happened was on a wet and rainy night. The driver was in a hurry. It was late, probably near midnight. Suddenly, out of the black bushes on the side of the road, a huge cat ran out in front of the car. The driver swung the car to save the huge cat that ran out onto the road. The car hit a tree, and there was no getting home that night. The man got out of the car, and in the dark, dark night, he could see the eyes of the huge cat staring at him. You big dumb thing, the man said. And the cat just stared at him, snarled, and ran away into the woods. It was raining hard and the man could see absolutely nothing. He began to walk along the road, hoping that a car might pass and pick him up. But there was nothing. Nothing, that is, until he came to the huge old house by the side of the deserted road. There were no lights. Everyone must be asleep, he thought. But on a night like this, he was certain that they'd let him in so he walked closer to the house. Closer. He was able to see that the windows were broken. Shutters were hanging. And the steps leading to the front door were falling apart. Well, thought the man, at least it has a roof. And maybe I can build myself a fire and dry off. He went in. The house was dark and seemed very empty. He lit a match, and by its light, he could see a fireplace. There were old papers lying around, and enough wood. He gathered it all up and started a nice, warm fire. Ah, it's not like home, he said to himself, but it's dry. And even if it's an old coming apart place, it's warm now. He put his hands close to the fire to warm them. And when he turned around, he saw a small gray cat looking at him. He tried to pat the cat, but the cat moved away from him. So the man went back to the fire and listened to the thunder and the rain and wondered when the storm would stop. The front door opened. The man looked around, and coming through the door, he saw the huge cat he had met on the road. The cat didn't look at him. It walked to the small gray cat. What are we going to do with him? The big black cat asked. And the little cat said, wait till Martin comes. The man had never heard of talking cats, so he thought that maybe he hadn't heard what he heard. Maybe he was too wet, too cold, too tired, and he was beginning to hear things because he knew, well, just the way you know. Cats don't talk. So he went back to the fire and paid no attention until 
he saw another cat come through the door. This one was even bigger than the other cats. A huge, huge cat. The biggest cat the man had ever seen. And he watched, a little afraid now, as the huge, huge cat walked to the other cats. The small cat asked, what are we going to do with him? And the huge, huge cat said, wait until Martin comes. And all three cats sat in a row and stared at the man. The man was afraid now. What was Martin? Who was Martin? And what could Martin do? He thought about the rain and hoped that Martin just wouldn't come. The biggest cat in the world walked through the door. The eyes of the great cat shone as it walked towards the man. Maybe this was Martin. And if it was, the man thought to himself, but he never finished the thought. Shall we do it now? The biggest of all the cats asked. And the little gray cat said, let's wait till Martin comes. The man didn't want to wait for Martin, not now. Not even if it was raining harder than ever, not even if the storm was getting worse. He wasn't going to wait for Martin, not him. And he started to leave. And Martin came through the door. Once there was an old woman who lived all alone out in the countryside. There were no neighbors nearby, and she had neither dog nor cat. The nearest village was six miles away, and the people in the village never paid very much attention to the old lady. As a matter of fact, the only time anyone ever saw her was during the Halloween season, when they would drive out to her place to buy pumpkins, because she grew the biggest pumpkins of anyone in the area. One morning, the old woman went out in the garden to pick string beans. And there, lying in the row next to the beans, she found a skinny toe. She took the skinny toe into the house and placed it in a small box, which she then placed at the back of a closet. The rest of the day passed without event, but that night when she went to bed, the wind began to howl and moan. And away in the distance, she seemed to hear a voice cry out, Who's got my skinny toe? Who's got my skinny toe? The wind grew stronger and began to howl around the house, and the old woman pulled the blankets over her head, but the voice seemed to get nearer. Who's got my skinny toe? Who's got my skinny toe? The wind now became a gale, and then, as suddenly as it had begun, it stopped. For a moment, all was quiet, and then the voice came again. Who's got my skinny toe? The old woman curled up in her bed and hugged the blankets about her, and then she heard the stairs begin to creak as though something or someone was walking up them. The door to the bedroom slowly opened with a creak that sent shudders racing through her. Something seemed to slip through the door and began to creep over the floor. Suddenly, a voice right next to the bed cried out, Who's got my skinny toe? Who's got my skinny toe?
You've got it! Once there was a man who had a lot of friends and a lot of opinions. Sometimes he was right and sometimes he was wrong, but right or wrong, he was always very sure of himself. Sitting around one night with some friends, he talked about this and that, and it got to be quite late. It was midnight. And midnight is a time when people begin to think about ghouls and witches and ghosts. The man didn't believe in ghosts. He didn't think much of witches. He laughed at ghouls. He wasn't afraid of anything, especially anything that didn't exist. All right, his friend said, if you know so much, why not prove it? All right, the man said, I'll prove it. Just tell me how. Well, one of the man's friends said, I happen to know about a haunted house. And if you've got the nerve, how about sleeping there for just one night? The man didn't even have to think about it. I will, he said. I will, and I'll prove to you that all this business about ghosts just isn't so. There was no sense in waiting. They decided that night was just the night. When it comes to ghosts, any dark, windy night will do. Any dark, windy, rainy, thundery night will do very well. They brought the man to the house, an old, dark, tumbling down house. They opened the front door. And they said, sleep well. Oh, he told them, I'll sleep very well. And I'll see you in the morning. We hope so, they told him. But they left him a pistol, just in case. The man took it with a smile. Guns are no good against ghosts, he said. The man knew enough to understand what all the sounds around him were all about. Wind and thunder, old boards creaking, shutters banging. And if this was a haunted house, well, he was in for a good night's rest. He looked around for a room. He was tired. It was very late. He found a bedroom and an old, old bed. He closed the shutters, pulled down the covers, put the pistol under his pillow, and humming to himself, got ready for bed. In spite of the wind and the rain, it was a warm night. The sounds kept the man awake, and he tossed and turned, and in spite of himself, he waited for ghosts but there was nothing. A storm passed, and the moon came out. The moonlight came in through the shutters. Too nice a night for ghosts, he thought. <coughs> but was it? At the foot of the bed, shining in the moonlight, the man saw two eyes staring at him. They didn't move. They just kept looking. The man was very still. All he could see were those eyes staring. Carefully he reached out and his hand found the pistol. Ghost or whatever it was, he was going to find out. He was frightened and the eyes kept staring. Mm -hmm. 
quietly, very quietly, he raised the pistol. Carefully, very carefully, he aimed at those eyes. Holding his breath, and the eyes stopped staring. The poor, scared man, seeing the moonlight reflected from his toenails, shot off his own big toe. <laughs>